Y'all, if you're anything like me, then you are probably a very disorganized person. I have always been disorganized. I've always had things all over the place, pieces of paper and reminders everywhere. It has really held me back in a lot of areas of life, but most importantly, when it comes to work either work that I've done as an employee, but also the work that I do now in my business. And it is up to me, because I'm a solo entrepreneur, to make sure that all the things get done. And there are a lot of things to get done as an entrepreneur. So today, what I thought I would do is take you behind the scenes and show you how I have leveraged Notion to become an organization ninja in my business. This would actually make Marie Kondo cry. She would love it so much. And the best part about it is that it's so ADHD friendly. Everything is just one click away and everything is organized in such a way that I won't forget about it because hashtag working memory issues. So on that note, let's jump into my Notion software. I will give you a full tour of my setup. So if you want the template, it's linked below. Or if you just want to follow along and use this for inspiration for your own Notion setup, or your own business, then feel free to take whatever will work for you and implement it. So on that note, guys, let's get into it. Okay, I hope you're comfortable because this is gonna take a minute. Now, what I wanna say first is that what I'm showing you is the template that I use in my business. It's not my actual dashboard because if I were you showing you my dashboard, I wouldn't be able to click in anything because obviously there's a lot of sensitive information. So this is the template that I'm using and if you want it, it is linked below, or you can just follow along on this video, use it for inspiration to add to your own existing Notion template or to start one. I love this template because it was designed to be ADHD friendly. What does that mean? It means that everything is right in front of you and it's just a click away because if things are three or four clicks away, we have a tendency to not wanna go there or forget that it's there and then we end up with pieces of information all over the place. I don't know about you, my office starts to look like notebooks upon notebooks upon sticky notes and everything else all over the place. And I wanted to get away from that because it's really overwhelming and the cognitive load to deal with clutter in my office, it just completely drains my energy and I can't be creative. So I built this because I am a disorganized person and I'm calling it the organized business. So starting at the top, what you see here is actually just like some video instruction on the template itself. So I'm not gonna get into that because once you've watched the videos, you can literally just click on this and delete it or archive it. The next thing down is just like an area where you can put the most important thing that you need to be focused on right now. This might be like a goal you're working towards or something you can't forget. Everything has to be externalized for an ADHD mind and designed in such a way that if your working memory is not great, like mine, then it's all gonna be right here so you can't forget it. Coming down to this area here, if you click this toggle, this is a master to-do list and you can see it a few different variations. This is like a team view if you had a team or by project or just all of your personal tasks or your tasks for this week. And obviously there's nothing in here because this is a template. And then when well, you don't want to look at that anymore because it's stressing you out, you just click that little toggle there and all your to-dos go away. And then the next piece down are the three main pillars that I think about business in. Operations is the foundation of your business. And let me tell you something, if you don't have that dialed in, it can be very problematic, especially as you start to grow, either uh, scale your business in general or start to grow a team. You've got to have operations. And I know it sounds boring, but it's really important and it will save you so much stress. And I will click into each area so it'll help you think through how to build your own operations. Or if you already have a business, you might see things that are gaps in your own business. Then the next pillar is marketing. So that's content workflow, no matter what kind of content you do, customer insights, your customer avatar, branding and marketing, like just storing all of the things in your business, like logos and brand colors and all of that stuff, any affiliate links that you use, and then a sponsorship CRM if you have sponsors. If you don't have sponsors, you can delete it or make it something else. And then the last column, you'll see your work. So for me, on my own personal dashboard, it's listing all of the products that I've created in my business. I will show you in a minute what that looks like, but just to take you down the entire front page, you've also got here a revenue tracker, business objectives, and your offers and products, and then your content calendar again. But you will see all of that in this actual database. So 
The mission, vision, and values, I won't spend a lot of time on that because that just lists out the vision, mission, and value of your own company. And I've got some examples in there and some prompting questions just to help you think through it. The next thing is the business goal tracker. I love this because it's got a visual cue of how far you are on each of your business goals. So for example, if your goal was $10,000 a month, you could click in here and uh, the completion of that goal would be 10,000. And then you're, you could plug in your current status here. Let's say you're at 5,500. These are all just examples. Then you're 55% the way towards this objective. And then there's just some prompting questions down here to help you think through your objectives. Now, underneath objectives in your business, you then have projects. Projects are like the big pieces you're working on in order to reach your uh, objectives. So that is the next link here. And I love the way this is set up. This is just all of your projects. This is your projects against a Gantt view timeline. So you can see what am I doing Q1, Q2. And then these are a list of your active projects. So they're all the same things just served up in different ways. So if you click into one of these projects, here's a sample project here, you would see the status, who's responsible, so you could tag people in here, what the completion rate is. You can relate any tasks to your project that you want, and you can relay a business objective to it. And down here, you've got some prompting questions about what the project's about to help you think through it, because as ADHDers, we love to start projects. Not necessarily finish them, but we love to start them. And then some project tasks. Any tasks that you put in here will automatically relate to this project. And then you'll be able to see it in the various different views, which just makes my heart so happy. Can you tell I'm obsessed with Notion? <laughs> okay, and down here, we've got tech and tools. In your business, you should always be tracking like what software am I subscribed to and various different services. You wanna track the cost, the frequency that you use it, any passwords, renewal dates, username, and related to any standard operating procedure. I'll get into that in a second, but uh, I just wanted to show you that piece. And I use that very infrequently, but it's always good to have because there's always a point where I need to go reference something. Underneath finances, this is all of the various different revenue streams you would have in your business. So for me, mine looks like one-on-one -on -one coaching, group coaching, AdSense, Mediavine, and digital products. All of them are listed out here. I put my revenue goal per quarter. So if you've been around here for a minute, you know that my first revenue goal in Q1 is 12,000 in passive revenue. So that doesn't include my coaching side of the business, but I am tracking towards that. And once it's done, I would be tracking like January results here, February results and March. So always be tracking the revenue sources that you have in your business because seeing them in a view like that helps you understand where your bread and butter is coming from. Speaking of bread and butter, the next database down here is offers and products. A product can be like something that is physical, like a day planner or something like that, or it can be a coaching package, anything. So what we have here is the link to the sales page of the product, the price of the product. If it's a product that is live for a certain period of time, let's say you're doing a group coaching class, you would have the program dates here. And then if you were doing a live launch before the class, what are the live launch dates? You could have that here. And then the number of units sold here. And then down here are just a bunch of questions to help you think through the product design. Who is it for? What is it for? What is the pain point? What is the cost format? All of those things. And within here, you would then store all of your messaging and the promotional assets that you have, any advertisements that you've created. And then this area down here is just for the actual planning of the product itself. So keeping everything contained in one area, but being able to relate it to other things like maybe projects or objectives is so important. So coming back here, that was under finances, right? And now we're gonna jump back to operations and talk about team. Now, I don't yet have a team, but eventually I know I'm gonna need a virtual assistant and I might get a video editor. I don't know about that. But let's say I was planning to have a video editor in Q2, but I wanted to start recording 
all of my own video editing processes that I want that video editor to use so that when I bring somebody on, it looks seamless from a viewer perspective. Not that my video editing is very good. So let's say this is the role. Maybe it's a person right now, or maybe it's just a role that you're dreaming up. If it was a person, you could have their location, department, job title, when they joined, their LinkedIn profile, contact information, you can have their picture there, they can put, and this is also their area, right? So as you build out a team, everybody be able to see this, what each person does, what they look like, where they live, their responsibilities in the company, their skill set and superpowers. And then down here, I've linked the SOP database, which is again, standard operating procedures. And coming into a role, I would have a few SOPs already designed for the person, like this is how I want things done. But I would also encourage them to use their expertise to enhance systems and processes and document it here. So this SOP database would then become their role to document all of the ways that they do things so that if they leave, the next person coming into that role has a documented list of all of the procedures that the, that role does, and they can just recreate this in their own image. So they now have just seamlessly integrated into the organization. So that's the way I'm thinking about this. I'm thinking today about the role that I'm going to be hiring six months down the line and just thinking through the things that would easily be offloaded or the things I don't like to do and tagging them so that when I come to the point where I need that VA, which was usually at the point where you're so stretched that you can't do anything else, I don't have to think, oh my gosh, I don't have time to hire a VA. I have everything stored and organized in one place for that VA. So when I'm ready to hire, I'm just hiring for skill set, and that person can come in and hopefully see everything in the one place and start to seamlessly integrate. That's the way I'm thinking about this team piece. But again, for me, that's not going to happen until later down the year. And then this is just the SOP database that is on its own. So if I come in here, I'll show you what this looks like, and it will help you to think through your standard operating procedures. So editing a long form video, what tools and tech am I using? I'm relating this back to that subscription database that I showed you earlier. And then you put the title of the SOP here. What is the purpose? What is the context? And then you can actually embed walkthrough videos of how to do things, or you can just write out the steps. It's just such an easy way to document everything. And then it's standardized so that anybody who comes into the company to start documenting processes can use that same template. So that's everything under operations. There's a lot more that I could do, but I don't like complexity. So for me, that's everything I need. From the marketing perspective, I've got my content calendar and any affiliates that I'm using or sponsorships. There's a CRM for that. So let's say somebody reached out, let's say Notion reached out and said, hey, Karen, your videos are so good. We want to sponsor you. You would put Notion here, contact name, email, status, notes, rate, and any work that I'm doing with them would be embedded in that one database. So everything is in one place that if I ever wanted to go back and reach out to that Notion person two years down the line, say, hey, let's work together again, I've got everything right there. In terms of customer insights, whenever anybody sends me feedback or says thank you for something, whenever somebody reaches out to me for coaching and tells me what their pain point is that they want to get coached on, that's a data point that usually is very relevant and universal across the majority of people that I work with. So I find that tracking that sort of language is really helpful. So when I'm creating tools or solutions to products, I can look at the language my customers are using when they discuss their pain points. Keeping that in one place is so important. And then you can also use this for feedback on products that you've uh, created or testimonials you want all of that in one place that you can use very easily. Customer avatar, I would definitely spend the time to go through each of these and answer these questions. Who is your person? What do they care about? Where do they live? What's going on with them? You can answer like a whole bunch of psychographic and geographic questions about them so that you have your person nailed down. And then what would be the feedback or testimonial that you would love to receive from them? Because that is going to guide everything you do, right? When you're an entrepreneur, especially when you're an entrepreneur with ADHD or you're a multi-potentialite who just wants to do all the things, you can be so overwhelmed with ideas, but you got to hone them in. And that's what I love about the way this template is designed to help you really think through ideas so that 
hopefully you'll abandon the wrong ones halfway through as opposed to having way too many things going on in your business. You will get a lot more selective because you'll start to see how much work is involved with each step. And then this is, I like this here. This is like all of my branding and marketing assets. These are my fonts and these are obviously not my, fan, uh, my brand colors because this is a template, but everything is stored in here. There's a coach agreement. I link to the ICF standard coach agreement if you need a template to work from. You store B-roll, logos, podcast art, anything you have in Canva, you can link to it here, all of your templates for Instagram or Pinterest. I've got a little mood board going on down here. So this is just all the creative pieces, the fun pieces in your business stored in one place because if you're anything like me, you used to have those in a bazillion different places. You've got templates all over the place and it means that you're starting every Pinterest pin or YouTube thumbnail from scratch as opposed to having templates that you can just keep reusing. So that keeps everything very tight and condensed. So coming back to this dashboard, we've got a reminder of what's most important, your to-do list. We walk through all of the various different pillars. And then down here is just a quick uh, review of your revenue tracker. You've already seen that. Your a quick view of your business objectives. You've seen that too and a quick view of your products and offerings. And you've seen that as well. And then down here is your content workflow. So I will show you through this. Let's say you are a YouTuber. You would write the title of the YouTube uh, video that you're gonna create up here in the um, title piece. And you can tag who's gonna be responsible for it. Like maybe you would put your video editor in there. You would indicate the status, the content type. So maybe it's a YouTube video, maybe it's an Instagram reel or something like that. You can use this for any piece of content you want, uh, the video status, if that's what it is, your content pillars. Usually most people that create content have various different pillars. So for example, my audience is women with ADHD and multipotentialites. However, the pillars that I speak to around ADHD are wellness, entrepreneurship, productivity. Like those are my content pillars that all revolve around that major subject area of ADHD personal development is basically what it is. So you would list out whatever your content pillars are here and you could tag those so you know how often you're addressing each content pillar, your keyword, your thumbnail, the URL, if it's a YouTube video and you've posted it, or if it's a blog post URL or podcast URL, whatever medium you prefer. And is it sponsored? Is there an affiliate? Is it a corner cornerstone piece or is a cornerstone meaning this is like one piece of content that there's going to be a bunch of other little pieces of content stemming out from? and publish dates for podcasts if that's it. So everything you need to get started with a piece of content is in here and it will help you guide through it. And then obviously whatever dates you've scheduled it for is going to show up right here so you can see that overall calendar view. That is the template in a nutshell and it is how I use Notion in my business. And I've got to tell you, I've been working on this since I would say mid-February, so about a month now, and it has just streamlined my workflow and made starting my day so much easier because I know exactly what I'm doing. I promised you I would show you my version of this template and I will show you that now. This is my operations view, which is very similar to the template. My marketing template has a bit more added to it. I've got a swipe file database. So if I come across the content that I really like, I will use it to inspire my own content or product ideas. And then over here under the work, I've got that offers and products, but then underneath here are all of my products. Like I have a different Notion template here. I've got a productivity program, goal setting workshop, all these various different things. And then I've got a database to track product inspo. So if I see somebody else who's done something in a different industry, maybe I can retool that idea in my industry for my audience. So all of those various different databases just track all of the things that I've done in my business. And it's incredibly helpful, especially when I'm still actively working on one of those products. And then down here is all of my content that I'm planning out, lots still to do there. And then these again are just my revenue objectives and product offerings. So that is my database. And I freaking love this. And I will end this off with the thing that I keep at the top here to remind myself. The world is not built for ADHDers, so we have to bend it in our direction. That starts with knowing what matters, so we remember to focus on it. And that is why I built this whole thing. So that is why I keep that front and center. It's really the ethos behind my business. And that's it. I hope you found this was helpful, inspiring, insightful. If you want the template, again, it's down below. 
enjoy guys. If you have any questions, let me know. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.